in part three, I'm mainly dealing with the post clamp and getting the bore in there for the actual post, which is how I'm starting out here. So the first step in that process obviously is getting a hole in the location where I want it. So the biggest drill that I can actually use um, in my drill truck is a quarter inch drill, so that's what this is here. And the end hole size is going to be 14 millimeter, which in inches is 551, I believe. And then I step through the bottom and then just keep increasing the size with um, available end mills. So this is a 3 8 end mill. I do have a 3 8 end mill holder. So I just ease the end mill down through there. It actually cut pretty well. And then take it up to a half inch high speed steel end mill and the shank size on this was 3 8 so it was able to fit into my end mill holder now I get to try out my brand new boring bar and boring head from Sureline so the first thing I do is I want to set the cutting edge against a known diameter and sort of establish the size that it's going to cut at. So I already know I have a half inch hole in there. So it's pretty easy just to touch that off and then take a skim cut. And I know that I'm probably about 505 or 510. Just a good way to establish. So since this was the first time I used this bar, I did do a little bit of testing. You know, I would move small increments, five thousandths or ten thousandths, and then see what the result would be. And it was um, actually very consistent. And I was even happy with the finish that the, the tool left. It came in already ground uh, with a cutting edge and it seemed sharp enough just to go ahead and use it so I didn't bother sharpening it at all I just went for it this is the finishing pass I think I ended up taking 10 or 12 thousandths on the finishing pass total and I ended up hitting the result that I wanted to, um, I, I was about plus one thousand. So this is the ground shaft that will be the post um, going for a fit and it, it slides in perfectly. Moving on to the slitting saw, this is my homemade arbor. Eyeball up the center and just go for it.
in all this seems like a fairly slow process, but I believe to get the entire way through it took maybe five minutes total. And I actually didn't take the saw straight through. I, I went um, as far as the tool would allow me to, to the bore, and then I just um, cut the rest of the way through with the hacksaw. So by doing that, I, I did end up eliminating um, the occasional failure of collapsing on the slitting saw, which can be somewhat catastrophic. So I was able to at least avoid that. And the end result was very good, and it operates well uh, clamping onto the shaft. So I'm getting into some of the other components here now, um, doing some more work on the CNC. I apologize for the video quality here. This was taken on a cell phone clamped into a vise next to the part being machined. So this part is going to be the, the bumper for the front end of the base on the comparator. So I'm machining just sort of the back edge here and then um, it will get a, a large radius on the front edge that can be swept against whatever surface you're indicating. The material that I decided to use for this is A2 tool steel. I'm probably going to also heat treat it since the surface will be coming into contact with various materials, so a nice hardened surface would probably be a good feature here. Um, and A2 hardens fairly well. And then just facing off the back side, the typical CNC operation. And the end result was, again, uh, very nice. So just take some holes in there and that'll be complete. And I decided to change up some of the knobs that I'm going to use for the actual post clamp. The original design had a very small knob and wasn't able to get quite the torque to actually tighten against the clamp. So I decided to make a much larger diameter and do some knurling on it to get a, a good grip. Uh, the fine, mysterious art of knurling properly <laughs> seems to escape some people. Um, but I, I decided to go with aluminum on this, so I'm going to put a hole in the one side and turn a threaded shaft that will become the screw and press that into the aluminum piece. And the, the part off there, and now just some features for aesthetics this will be the actual steel screw that will be pressed into and loctited into the aluminum knob and the progress thus far I'm uh, quite happy with the progress of uh, this project and look forward to continuing on.